and welcome everybody to this Lacuna Festival's Clash 2022 um, event. Tonight we are here with a selection of Ukrainian artists to discuss art in the wartime. And this event has been organized by Elena Kainska, who is going to be the compere for this evening. So I'm gonna pass over straight away to you, Elena. Take it away. Uh, welcome everybody. And uh, this event is planned uh, like a discussion, like we are going to uh, set some questions and I'm not really sure if we could, we could find, if we are able to find answers. Because myself, I'm an artist and I, and I live in a country where there is a war. And uh, I found out that my art practice has changed dramatically since the time the war began. And uh, I gathered all you together today uh, to find out how your life and your art practice changed with the beginning of the war. And, uh, and I found out that art, art uh, has become a kind of a sort of a mirror that reflects what happens now in Ukraine, because many Ukrainian artists now take the war as a topics for their uh, paintings and other artworks. Many Ukrainian artists start to be more political oriented people. And uh, also uh, this Ukrainian art now reflects a lot our strange resistance and courage. And Ukrainian art today is very sharp. It's very, uh, very real. It's very bloody. It's very, uh, it's hard to say, it's very powerful. And uh, Artists, uh, they put all their hearts, they put all their paints, all their tear teardrops in that paintings and other creations and other artworks. And uh, today I would like to hear your stories as all of you are art artists. And uh, I would like to know how your life really changed, uh, the life stories. I would like to ask you uh, why you decided to stay in Ukraine what was the circumstances of your life that you stayed in Ukraine? Uh, how do you uh, want to continue your art practice and how it changed with the beginning of the war? And uh, maybe the first person to speak today, I would invite uh, Marta Trotsuk, uh, the director of Gallery One on One and the uh, president of Ukrainian Galleries Association. Uh, hello guys and um, thank you for inviting, thank you Olena and um, um, yes well everything changed. I'm not an artist myself but I am working with artists and I'm even even more like working with them when the war started and um, I will tell you my story, I will um, try to make it uh, short. So when the war started everybody was in shock. I was like uh, freeze from for a couple of days and uh, didn't know what to do. But on the fourth day, um, we met with other galleries here in my city and we decided we need to fight on, um, on the cultural uh, front. <laughs> and what we did, we organized uh, with the um, Ministry of Culture of Ukraine, we organized a petition. And then with a group of people, we, we um, translated it into 22 languages. And in that petition, we were asking our colleagues abroad, uh, cancel Russian culture as a type of sanctions. So we have, you know, like against Russia, we have economical, political, uh, sport, and also we have cultural sanctions, which is pretty obvious because through culture, people get ideas, right? And get ideas really deep in their minds. And we believe that Russia, um, they did really strong cultural uh, propaganda campaign and now we have to deal with that. So we did this petition and then we organized a, a te telegram uh, channel for um, people uh, all around Ukraine who related to art or creative industries. And um, it's kind of like uh, influencers in, in different niche in, in uh, culture and um, we were discussing different topics and we were, um, when somebody sees uh, some events like um, cultural co collaboration or artist residency for Ukrainian refugees and Russian and Belarusian, we were trying to connect them and explain that now it's impossible. So um, I can talk a lot about that because I had my insights uh, 
good ones and bad ones in this topic. And yes, and also me myself, um, I'm started to, so before the war started, started I was uh, working mostly in Ukraine, um, organizing art events, helping artists, um, organizing and curating art exhibitions and different art projects. And then I was traveling a lot uh, and discovering art abroad and actually telling about art in different countries on my channels, Gallery 101, you can take a look. But then when the war started, I, I, it kind of reversed. And now I'm working more promoting Ukrainian culture and art abroad. So I, uh, since the war started, I traveled three times already. Um, and I was meeting with galleries, with the art centers. Uh, I had many calls. Uh, and we, we have now pretty successful projects like um, artist residences for Ukraine. Ukrainian galleries and some supports. Now I hope we will go to Taiwan and so on. So now the idea is more show our art abroad to, to uh, remind that we have war, but also to show that our art is unique and it's different than Russian and it's, it's and then actually we are different nations. <laughs> and through art, you can, uh, you can, you know, tell these ideas really well. As Solana told before, that art now is super powerful. So that's what we also see. And we try, and me, myself, I'm trying to perceive these ideas and, um, and to tell this and to make those cultural relationships. Before it was cultural relationships maybe with Russia, and now we are trying to cancel Russia and say, hey, look at us, we are maybe even better. <laughs> so we have what to show you. And we have really good quality cultural product uh, I mean, everything from songs, theater, films, uh, visual art. Yes, we have some uh, problems in some niches because lack of finances and not maybe a good attention of our government before, before the war started related to, to cultural niche and to representation of Ukrainian broad. But still, now we have to keep up with this. And so we call it cultural diplomacy. That's what I'm usually... And, canceling of Russian culture, what I'm involved in. So that's like a short. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much, you Marta. Yes, I have one question. Like as a gallerist, uh, did you notice any changes in the perception of Ukrainian art abroad? Like uh, do people with the beginning of the war started to put more interest into Ukrainian art, uh, look, for, look more for Ukrainian artists to participate in the art residencies? Did you notice any of this tendency? Yes, that's for sure. And the focus now uh, is on Ukraine, right? But still we have this that the focus it's not it's not gonna last forever. So we have the small window. Uh, like a possibility of possibilities and we have to use it but now the tendency goes down so everyone gets uh tired of of you know of this war and uh, they start to forget and so on so that's also our mission to remind people about war and um but still the, yes the awareness of ukrainian art became higher and so on uh, but that's a problematic here also because if we will talk only um, about war, so we will be associated like Ukraine is war. So Absolutely. we also need to, to show something different, something we have unique, not only war now. And also we have something like, um, so I, I've heard um, some stories, I, I didn't have this kind of experience with my partners abroad, so they give me all the you know, uh, freedom to create what I want on event, for example. But mm -hmm. for some, uh, my, uh, from some of my colleagues, I've heard that they have this uh, kind of, please don't show this um, images or this project, make, make it a little bit less, um, uh, you know, like hard to uh, digest, let's say like this, because some of the projects, they're really tough. They're about war, of course, it's blood there, it's crime there, it's raping some, you know, like it's it's really tough yeah. emotionally. So you, you have this kind of, from some countries and, and some institutions, they're like, we, are, we want to uh, work with you, but can you make the exhibition, for example, a little bit more easier, <laughs> more like not this bloody, more, you know, like 
beautiful kind of and you're like what <laughs> so that's the, we have to balance uh if we want to say about tell about war we can do it if we have if you have cool ideas and they are bloody because war is bloody and if they are not normal in regular way people think think art should be but the situation is not normal so it's okay but another on another hand i will tell you that you have to work now also on your other uh topics you were working before maybe or not that's straight forward related to war just to show that we are unique not only about war that ukraine not only about war so that's yeah that's true and marta uh i have one more que question maybe some other people also have some questions for you but another one is uh, how successful was uh, the campaign to ban the russian culture do you have any precedents or do you have some uh, uh some stories of success of this campaign uh, we have stories of success but we have our I, I, I had many disappointments in this topic, especially first months, because you understand you're in, in, the, in the war directly. I'm also in Ukraine. So you feel it, but not everyone is the same. <laughs> and yeah. um, and that, that's the problem. Uh, first months, we were like, okay, now we tell our partners, please ban Russia, and maybe they will stop the war, or they will be like, they will be more um push to do something to deal with their problems back in russia and yeah. but many people uh, they they like but no not not every russians are bad yes maybe it's like this but that's sensitive topic and let's talk like this give more space more possibilities to more like uh, places on residences uh artist residences for example on exhibitions give to ukrainians because they have to speak now they're victims don't give to liberal russians they have to go to russia and do their work there that's you know like that's the what we were trying to say them and we have many um checkpoints we we can mention um just to explain why they have to ban russia but it sometimes it was very tough um and uh, for example with venice biennale we succeeded uh with the taiwan uh ministry of culture we succeeded and in many cases but still we have many cases that people refuse to ban russia completely um for different reasons and most reasons that um the first, I, I see two reasons or they have tight relationships with russia and finances because russia financed a lot of art institutions abroad or they have the russian participants in boards of the museum uh, that's also or the the second thing that somebody is still believing that there there is kind of uh russian culture which is not in imper imperial cult culture which is when you read the Hermitage Museum director interview, you are like, wow, that's the, the, the most, their significant institution. And if they are like this, you can imagine all the rest. So, yes. yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Marta, for your presentation. And to that, everybody, anybody has a questions to Marta? Okay, so let's move to the, our next speaker. Maybe if uh, Lucy Nechai, if you are ready to speak, I would like to hear your story. Hello, hello all. Uh, I um, try to um, explain how, how I've changed my life. <laughs> but um, thank you, Marta, for your for your work. What you uh, do, I uh, read only. Not always I can to reach to all um, activities, but because I had a very a very huge number of different activities in my residency um, about what I talk a little bit later, but. Um, I understand what uh, now I am abroad. I back from the presentation of um, my art residency in my partner institution in Germany and had a different uh, conversation in, in, in different people from, uh, from France, from Germany, from Czech. And I understand what um, I not agree with people don't uh, f forget about uh, war. Uh, they remember because all had a uh, financial crisis and it's a um, very important thing what they every day uh, 
dream about uh, somebody must kill Putin. <laughs> and I understand what this. It's a really interesting thing when you can uh, reflect it uh, from the your partners, your uh, other artists from abroad about this situation because they understand all situation and we think what uh, we had some Russian propaganda but uh, people who are in, in, uh, involved in some um, art uh, spaces or in some uh, it's in, intelligent yes <laughs> they have uh, in, enough information about what happened now and uh, uh, I, I think what about, about uh, our art um, presentation um, I think what for Ukrainian artists now now more important don't work about uh, bloody and what happened very um, uh, hard in Ukraine because they uh, can uh, take this information from news but very important to show what most artists st stay in Ukraine and why they, they, they stay. It's very important thing when uh, I was, uh, I had many, many different uh, conversations and uh, all uh, asked me, please uh, stay here. You must save yourself because it's not your war. It's not my war and no your war. It war of politicians, of politics. And uh, after that, I, of very long time, I think about this and understand what not. It's not uh, true because now we have the war um, opposite for Ukrainians, not about some politicians for Ukrainians. And we are all Ukrainians and it's other war. Okay, I, it's only my a little bit of reflection about presentation abroad, um, and I back to the my <laughs> changes in my life. Yes, how changed my life as an artist, as a curator, because I'm curator of uh, art residency in West Ukraine, and in the start of war, my first activities was um, rescue of artists with their families uh, and hosting them in my residency because I have few rooms for living and uh, in different time I had uh, in, inside my uh, residency was um, 9 to 20 people in the same time with children with pets and it was uh, maybe some somebody stay only few days sometimes uh, it was two or three weeks and some of them stay here um, now and um, is a parallel parallel of these activities are uh, in physical uh, dimensions i have the virtual community in which um, name uh, crypto art ukraine and we uh, organized an initiative of rescue team and collected the different information for location, how find the <coughs> place for accommodation, some, some place uh, where the, um, shelters for um, for people for, who come from east, from center near the Kiev, come to the West Ukraine and abroad. Uh, we had a um, small budget in the community and sharing the money, uh, sharing the, um, some information and sharing the only uh, we speak uh, with each other. It was a, a light psychologic um, um, help because people uh, reflection uh, re reflected in the same people. It was very good for, for all us. Uh, but after one or two weeks, uh, very intensive uh, activities, I understand what we must um, start uh, make the art because it's very good therapy for all. And we start the project with, which named the uh, internal elements. It's mean internal elements and the um, people who stay in Ukraine and it's uh, some internal um, emotion what we feel when start the war and we um, I maybe can to uh, give you some uh, link to other website now we finish website and uh, we create the project some uh, mix it of uh, different uh, levels uh, we phys physically stay in art residency but create digital art and make the virtual uh, presentation and make uh, all 
uh, pictures start the crypto art and we uh, uh, create the um, project in one cyber it's a virtual ga gallery for uh, crypto art um, after start of war in my uh, life change only one thing i i uh, uh, stay the curator of art residency but I start the artist because before I only create my picture uh, as an art therapy but after start this project I start to present my uh, art pieces um, in the public um, spaces and I think it's all <laughs> have, have changed my life now I um, uh, go to abroad a second time and uh, had the uh, planning few exhibition for Ukrainian artists who stay in Ukraine and uh, my main idea to find the galleries and partners who can to uh, organize um, some uh, selling for for Ukrainian art for uh, supporting Ukrainians who stay in Ukraine because I understand what not all uh, can uh, have opportunity to um, take some fellowships I understand what many different opportunities around but it's only few percent of a uh, huge number of artists who stay in Ukraine can, can to uh, take it and uh, in the um, August we plan a uh, first exhibition in Germany, in Little House, in my partner galleries. In October we uh, must have a, another um, exhibition in uh, uh, Munich. Um, and I think it's all. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I have a question for you. So actually before the war, you was mostly acted, acting as a curator. And uh, with the beginning of the war, you started to create yourself. Did the war provided you with some reflex, reflections that you feel that urge that need to create yourself? Mm, no, I, I created uh, or every day <laughs> before uh, only after start of war i i start to show what i create <laughs> it's only uh, one little change in my life like, because uh, it's for me because it, uh, before it was um looks like uh, i haven't time to uh, haven't time to uh, present myself because i always was involving in different organization and creating of uh, art project and it was only art therapy but after this uh, I, I start maybe um, it's not more publicity I uh, understand what I must use all opportunity around because we have a very small uh, small uh, percent of uh, some uh, activity in in uh, sh shelter <laughs> in the village yes uh, and only one thing you have is internet yeah and we see that Marta has a question. Marta, please. Hello, Lidmila. Uh, yes, I have a question regarding art exhibition. Um, is it easy to find a partner? A partner? And the second uh, question, are you working with artists who are already abroad uh, or you are uh, transferring artworks or it's only digital? Just to clarify, what is the logistic of artworks you want to uh, show and to sell? Because uh, it's, it's now it's really sensitive topic for everybody, especially who is in Ukraine to send artworks abroad and so on. Uh, at first uh, question about partners uh, partners I work only with my partner who uh, with me many years it's uh, in Munich in my partner's uh, residency for exchange program and a gallery in Berlin it's my partner gallery and we uh, um, we work few years uh, and before I was in Romania and we find some one uh, NGO art NGO and uh, they were very open to the help us and uh, it's NGO situated in the um, Cluj Napoca it's uh, um, north of uh, Romania and uh, this NGO um, want to find for a project what we uh, 
need want to present um, find a different location for for it but i think it's maybe not usual situation but uh, in, in my case it's work about uh, how uh, about logistic uh, in uh, munich we uh, um, present only a digital uh, project but in uh, uh, germany i want to bring some um, picture but uh, but i think it's uh, only bus uh, with uh, me <laughs> maybe somebody can come with me but i um, must bring it in my hand because i don't know how about sending something uh, i i think what um, not all um, deliveries uh, company work now in ukraine i think very useful to to use the bus <laughs> because uh, bus transferring it's uh, every day you have few opportunity to go to in different uh, um, direction in europe uh olena don't hear don't hear the microphone does anybody else have a question to Luda? Um, I don't have a, a question. I was just going to add something about um, artwork getting out of Ukraine, because I know that for some of the festival artists this year, they wanted their work to be physically present, but obviously, like you say, it's really difficult at the minute. And so um, we've worked with a local printing organization so that people can print things here. And actually it's worked out a lot cheaper and um, without all of the damages and stuff, like it's really difficult sometimes trusting your artwork to a shipping company and then it arrives and it's got a big hole in it or, you know, whatever. Um, so that's another possibility that has worked quite well for some artists this year. Obviously it doesn't work if you're like, you know, wanting to send a sculpture. If you're doing digital drawings, then yeah, it's worked well for those people. Yes, absolutely. I want to add that this model is, is really working because uh, I have uh, the four or five projects already uh, done with the printing. So I just sent uh, the project to the people, then people print it out on site. And then uh, I hold the presentation by Zoom or by other channel online. Yes, and uh, uh, I can to add a small uh, in um, Munich uh, where I was. It's a not it's a uh, little uh, city near the Munich. It's a Freising, and they had a big gallery, and now uh, plan the. Um, um, exhibition of uh, Odessa Photo Week and they only send the digital um, it's a chpeg yes and uh, it's what uh, it's uh, will be a presentation of a uh, big printing of photo it's not a photo on some photo paper it's only a presentation of uh, visual content they decide to, to, to present um, Ukrainian artist in this um, with, with way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, let's move to the next speaker. Uh, Jana Hudzan is an artist from Lviv. Are you ready to speak? You are muted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'll take a chance to speak in English. Uh, Olena uh, felt that uh, she will be translating me, but uh, it's a short story, so I'll tell it by myself. Um, I'm a Ukrainian art uh, artist. Uh, I just um, before the war, I've been um, providing my art project with. Uh, the topic of Ukrainian grandmothers and so on. Uh, it's very, it was very funny. So uh, I decided to make an exhibition. Uh, the exhibition was planned uh, in this summer. But on uh, uh, the beginning of the war, I was uh, so shocked that I can't do anything. I can't paint. I can't uh, plan my future. I was. Uh, just just shock, shocked you know this was a very emotional and mental trauma for me um, besides I decided to move uh, from Lviv 
to my parents and so on. I uh, was for two months uh, with my parents, with my family, just supporting them, just uh, cooking, just cleaning the house, just uh, working uh, at the garden, just doing anything, but I can't, uh, I can't paint, I can't provide my art. And uh, I thought that uh, this is the end of my uh, artist career. You know, it's, uh, this is very hard, but um, um, the two months um, uh, after the uh, big invasion, I started to paint in one day. I started to listen to the music. I started to listen to any contact, uh, content, uh, um, not only to the news, and uh, I began uh, with the one canvas about uh, the Ukrainian uh, refugees uh, from Mariupol city. Uh, there was a very big trauma for all Ukrainians where, when uh, Mariupol city was uh, bombed every day and just uh, destroyed over. So uh, I began to uh, Painish, and uh, this is, was the beginning of my new um, series of paintings about the war. Uh, but uh, as my colleagues painted uh, just uh, lots of uh, uh, kind of propaganda, kind of posters, uh, I uh, decided to find some uh, symbols, and that's uh, the symbol of. Um, my new series was about the flowers. Uh, you know, the war is about, about the flowers for me. I saw the gray flowers everywhere. I saw the flowers uh, of, uh, you know, uh, the flowers of uh, Mariupol. I uh, want to bring uh, the flowers to Mariupol, but uh, I can't uh, just uh, move to here, there to um, give uh, the flowers to this city. You know, flowers uh, on the graves of our soldiers, uh, on the graves of uh, uh, Bucha, on the graves of uh, victims of Irpin, and uh, this is one, uh, this uh, was uh, kind of five uh, or six canvases, big canvases about this. And uh, so on, I uh, painted a big canvas uh, about the uh, peace, Russian peace. Uh, Russians uh, bring peace to uh, every country they invited. This is a kind of peace uh, in, um, different way, Russian way. So it was a uh, kind of dove, this dove uh, with uh, great flower, gray flowers. Uh, so, uh, and um, I thought that uh, I can uh, really uh, exhibit uh, the, this works uh, with my old projects because uh, uh, all uh, our grandmothers saw the World War II, uh, and we saw now the World War III. Yeah, and uh, this is like combining two series in one project. So I um, exhibited it in uh, Ivan Frankivsk uh, nearly uh, from um, uh, 29 June to uh, 15. Of July, and uh, the exhibition is already uh, continued. Uh, continued, yes. So, uh, and I have um, the reflections about the Ukrainians and uh, Ukrainian people who are uh, like in the middle. You know, you are. Your life is the figure. And uh, the background is war. Uh, you eat, you go to 
uh, some restaurants, uh, you go to parks and uh, so on. And, but the explosions, the rapes, the deaths are in the background and it's horrible. So, and uh, the people uh, in the zero line are uh, in the situation where war is their life and the background is our peace life. And it's horrible too. So uh, this is like uh, kind of uh, new ideas for the next project. Uh, Jana, could you please uh, share your screen and show us uh, the few pieces from your new project? Oh. There is a button below your screen, the green one, share screen. The green one, share screen. Yes. When you put your cursor down the down your window share, with yes. the face, yeah. Uh, Microsoft OneDrive, yes. Uh, Google Drive. Yeah, you can either share your screen or share the link to your project in the chat so we can actually see what you're doing. Um, I just uh, couldn't get it. Um, a photo, ah, screen, screen, okay. Yep. Whilst Jana is finding her work, I'm just going to jump in and say, I've got, I've got like many screens going off right now. And Jana, I have found you on Instagram and there's loads of really good um, pictures up there if people are wanting to see more. Yes, this uh, work is flowers for, Mar for Mariupol. The flowers I have to uh, bring to this city uh, to honor, to have, uh, um, uh, to just, uh, give uh, the honor to the city, uh, but uh, I can't uh, because I am too far and the city is uh, under occupation, you know. This is like uh, details from this work. You know, sorry. Okay, next work. This work is... Uh, this work uh, is about uh, the grandma refugee, uh, Ukrainian refugee from the war. Again, see the background, and, uh, this uh, dark background of the war, uh, worship. And uh, this, uh, this is... Uh, uh, the moment when she looks away, looks back, uh, this canvas is uh, named looking back, looking back to the life uh, she is uh, living and she uh, just uh, didn't, don't know what, to, doesn't know what to do, where to go uh, to the new life, uh, what is uh, so uh, unpredictable. And this is, uh, this is canvas, very important for me because this canvas I uh, painted, the, uh, the first canvas I painting, uh, I pay, I painted um, uh, from, uh, from the beginning of the big war. This uh, uh, refugees, they are naked, they are scared and in, uh, injured. Uh, so this is, uh, Mm, a big spot, a um, big red spot uh, on the top uh, is about uh, the uh, uh, disaster. Uh, it's about the, the very big disaster, what war is, and they're running away, running away in, uh, in the darkness. You know? 
uh, nowhere to go. And the canvas uh, is named uh, God is Forgotten Us. You know, this is about uh, the people in Mariupol were, um, with, there were uh, no chances uh, to survive. This is uh, this is a work about uh, the uh, after after the invasion after our soldiers were rescued and uh, our Bucha and Irpin in Kiev uh, district were free of Russian soldiers. Uh, people uh, were. Uh, uh, looking back to their houses, so they saw uh, burnt out houses uh, um, and uh, this uh, this is like mm, uh, uh, this uh, these flowers uh, in the uh, are, are just like signs uh, of the bullets uh, were mm, lived uh, after the invasion. Uh, the volunteer from the uh, Canada, I think, Canada, uh, she, will, uh, she was um, helping uh, our people uh, to, uh, to go through this uh, and uh, painted uh, uh, the flowers around the bullets, uh, holes, holes of the bullets, you know, and this is very, uh, were a kind uh, uh, sign, you know, uh, and after that, uh, the people can uh, go through and go to your houses, to their houses. And the house is uh, upside down because, uh, you know, <laughs> you can go through upside, you, go, you can go in upside down house. And this is upside down life uh, where Ukrainians are about now. So uh, this is uh, oh no, no this is a dove of Russian peace, you know, uh, what I'm talking about uh, in the beginning. Uh, their peace is uh, for me it looks like that, you know. You can turn your head uh, uh, into uh, the the way. Uh, the the dove is uh, and uh, see the gray flowers. Uh, it's full of it. It's it's a beautiful colored uh, life, but uh, there's gray flowers. You know, it's uh, and the direction is from uh, the east to the west, of course. Okay, Janas, thank you so much. Okay, thank uh, you. Because we also have to give uh, some time to other people to speak. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful artworks. And uh, we really appreciate that we can also see, uh, not only hear your story, but I have one question. Uh, you said that with the, with the beginning of the war, it was a time that was not possible for you to create and not possible to paint. And uh, as far Absolutely. as I can understand, this was uh, the moment of uh, so-called freezing because I felt the same. Uh, like uh, I was concentrated I only see. on the news and uh, I couldn't paint at all. And But after that, you said that there was a moment that you started uh, painting again. And did something happen or uh, how was that moment of you to get back to your art practice? Uh, you know, one day... Uh... I remember that day, uh, I just uh, let myself uh, to listen to the music, you know. Mm, it was, uh, mm, it was uh, Pink Floyd uh, uh, song, uh, bringing back to life. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> uh, and just uh, that song, uh, I, I, could, I could cry uh, because I was so freezed uh, that I couldn't cry even so I pull out of my, all my emotions away and can 
was able to uh, begin uh, to pay even something. Okay, does anybody else have the questions to Jana? No, Jana, thank you so much for sharing your story. I think it, we all appreciate it greatly. Thank and you for so, the invitation very much. It's, it's very pleasure. important. Yeah, and um, maybe we can move forward with the story of Mikhail Skop, Navon. Uh, are you comfortable to speak now? Do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, hello once again. Um, I don't know which about to, to say, but may maybe I can tell about me in few words just. Uh, before the war began, I created uh, easel graphics, uh, some objects, uh, making some performance. Uh, uh, I worked with the uh, issue of memory, of myths, uh, ideology and identity. The question that uh, very important now, uh, so uh, on February 24, when my first hand uh, shaking was uh, off and I um, begin to uh, think what I can do in this terrible uh, situation, uh, I remembered that I uh, study iconography and semiotics and uh, I believe in uh, very huge uh, power of science. So I have to uh, do the one thing I can. I So I decided to create posters and talk about Ukraine in visual uh, images, not uh, just uh, to Ukrainian uh, people, because the Ukrainian people uh, know what is uh, happening, but uh, I uh, wanted to speak uh, to some foreigners because um, uh, science uh, can ignore language uh, barriers and reach people uh, in any corner of the world, speak to their humanity and empathy and make uh, the world uh, the little um, uh, a little more good place when one people understand another people. Uh, so uh, I uh, know about uh, some problems uh, which uh, we have. Uh, the, the first of all, uh, it's that uh, many people uh, uh, heard about Ukraine in the first time. And uh, so it's very difficult to Mm, for them to prove uh, why this war is important for them. It's a uh, it's very strange problem, but we have it. Uh, and uh, even more, uh, that, uh, that people in these first months of the war uh, had uh, got tired of Ukraine. They know that some country have a war, uh, they can uh, help uh, in some way, but uh, they uh, have gone and they, they just tired. So uh, it's uh, necessary uh, to create a cultural product uh, so will uh, not allow us to disappear in the informational uh, noise. Uh, not just posters, uh, not just uh, war content. Uh, when the world um, heard in the first time about Ukraine, we need to speak about us everything. Uh, because uh, in, in different, in, when, when we will uh, tell just about war, we will be remembered uh, only uh, as a victims of war. And we will have uh, Chernobyl, uh, Holodomor and uh, Russian war, just, just, just that. So we need uh, to, um, to make something more because uh, when you just victim, it kills uh, empathy. 
you aren't uh, human uh, in in full sign of this word. Uh, therefore, I believe uh, that uh, artists uh, can just, just artists can help Ukraine to maintain a positive image of Ukraine. It's very strange to tell about something positive, but we need. It's because the uh, uh, world is sick of our negative. It, it, it's terrible, I know it. But uh, it's a um, very strange uh, task for me. What I can do, not, uh, not just about uh, the war, uh, to, vault, uh, to show the world uh, our country and make it uh, more interesting. So I have an uh, answer for this question. Maybe you have. Uh, could you uh, share with us uh, some of your powerful posters? Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, for... You can share your screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Uh, a little, uh, a little piece of minute of moment. I just need to find it. Okay, uh, I can. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's okay. And uh, uh, but where is it? Uh, uh, this, this ah share screen. Okay, yeah, yeah added. Yeah, this is my um, Facebook. You can see uh, all of my works. It's uh, all of them living in this folder on my Facebook. It's my uh, tarot series. Uh, my series that I want and, and I believe that I will print it and make it uh, for thousands and thousands um, uh, uh, cards, but not now. Uh, you see that all of my posters, uh, not, uh, not all, but maybe 19%, uh, it's uh, very negative. So uh, the problem I speak about, I know, uh, know very good because uh, I have two uh, uh, moments in this, the fighting and uh, the image of victims, J just two. And I want to add something more to make it interesting for more and more people that sick uh, of us. So it's the uh, yeah, last. I was, I was my... also thinking about the fact that people are fed up with the Ukrainian so-called negativity. But now uh, I think that our image in the, in the eyes of the world changed a little bit because from, mm -hmm. the, from the highly negative, always complaining, always not satisfied people, we turned out to very big strengths and resistance. Mm -hmm. And I think that we uh, start to really change the image of Ukraine in the eyes of the, all the other world. And we have a question from Lacuna Festivals, please. Hi, so, um, well, it's literally just totally gone straight out of my head as soon as you came up to it. No, that's it, it's come back, okay. The positivity. So mm -hmm. I don't know, um, I know that already somebody said that they've traveled um, outside of Ukraine, but I don't know how many other people have um, since this has begun. And so if it is helpful, I can share how um, how how Ukraine is being um, portrayed, I guess, in the media of definitely two countries, because I spend some of my time in the UK and some of my time in Spain. And I think mm -hmm. that this kind of um, empathy fatigue that you talk about is I think that some of that is human nature, but actually I think that um, what Elena says, I think that particularly in Britain, I think that people that really identify with your um, with your kind of strength and your kind of courage of conviction, and um, I think that everyone's behind you, you know. So I know that there's a lot more to the Ukraine than what you're showing in your posters but I mean like I feel a bit like you're beating yourself up about not having something more positive to share with the world at the minute but what you're mm -hmm. sharing is super powerful so I 
yeah it wasn't really a question it was just kind of a reflection on what you were saying mm -hmm. thank you yeah uh, it's uh, it's process of uh, pain uh, i i can't uh, tell nothing more about this art i have pain and i put it on the photoshop in this digital art uh, and and uh, and this is it j j just my pain so we so, have another uh, question from marta trutsuk please hello yes i agree with you and i also told my opinion about this kind of neg negativity or uh relation to war and uh, comparing ukraine with war and so on i think that we can rid of the topic of war now because it's really that what we are going through but still we can try to to show our uniqueness and our skills in terms of culture uh, because i i travel a lot and i discover art in many countries and i see what what i see can be interesting for them um is that that we our nation passed through some uh, unique and difficulties and unique history of forming the nation. And art is showing that, not necessary, but uh, some, you know, like um, hard topics, but generally we will, we will and we had already created special, uh, something special through our art. But the problem is that we didn't show it abroad. That's the main problem. And we have to work on, uh, to be recognized, to work on art exhibition, collabor art exhibitions, collaborations, attending art events, art fairs, and so on. And just to show this uniqueness, which you can see, because, you know, you can, you can tell difference from art in Asia, Latin America, and, and Europe and, 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 you know, like um, USA, because they have some related to their culture. They have something that you can see, it's like a niche there, or it's a trend. I don't like this word, but still you have some trends in art and culture. And in Ukraine, we also can have kind of a trend and to show it abroad and to be unique in this kind of stuff and be clever as a nation, because we had to survive so many years and so we, we have this cleverness in art also. And I think we just have to show this uniqueness to the world. And that's probably, that's long, that will take long time. It's not a short process, but I believe we can do that. Uh, so to show our art, not, not only negative related to, uh, to war. That's my opinion. Thank you. Mikhailo, thank you so much for your presentation and for showing and your for you. posters. Really appreciate that. And I think that uh, would be great if uh, all of you, the participants, share your contacts uh, in the chat and uh, share the links to your projects. So everybody can then, if you don't know each other, you can interconnect or, and uh, you can follow the projects of each other. And also it can go wider, wider with the video, which would go uh, right after this presentation. And uh, I would like to ask, uh, I would like to ask Alexander Nikituk, an artist from Vinica, to share his story as uh, he's also creating a very powerful series about the war. Uh, Alexander, please uh, come to us and unmute yourself. Uh, I'm uh, very bad speak English. Uh, I will help you. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> please. Ти можеш говорити українською, речення за реченням, я тобі можу перекладати, якщо так Мені потрібно розповісти, що. Тобі потрібно розповісти, як змінилася твоя мистецька практика з початком війни, чи взагалі щось змінилося, чи як змінилося твоє життя як митця, чому ти залишився в Україні, ну це більше до жінок, напевно, питання, тому що, але... В принципі, про це теж можна розповісти, бо аудиторія цього відео буде міжнародна, тому... Можемо розповідати. 
Тобто твоя okay. історія як митця і війну. Ну, війна прийшла так само, як для всіх, несподівано. So for me, the war was unexpected, like for all the others as well. Ранком позвонили і сказали, що прилетіли ракети перші. Uh, I received a telephone call early in the morning and found out that the first missiles hit. І перша реакція була, ну, звісно, негативна і шок. And of course, my first reaction was very negative and I got shocked. Всі плани рухнули в один час. All of my plans collapsed at once. Ну, ви, мене більше знають як художника, який працював з ленд-артом. I'm more uh, known for working with land art. Проводив фестиваль, зимову, зимовий фестиваль ленд-арту в Вінницькій області, Міфогенез. And I held the Winter Land Art Festival Mitogenes in the Vinnytsia Oblast. І ми завжди такі були художники, романтики. So we are kind of a very romantic artists. Ми співпрацювали з ландшафтами, з природою, з природними станами. We were working with the landscape, with the nature and nature conditions. І все соціальне, все, всі хвороби в соціальні нас якось обходили стороною. Uh, so we were quite away from all the social problems. Але в перший день війни і перша моя реакція було створення плакату під назвою No One. But uh, first my reaction on the very first day of the war was the creation of the poster which I named як називався Шарос, я не почула. Ні війні, нова. No to the war. Ну, ні ні війні. Правильно? Так. Є та. і там схрестилися три елементи, елемент самого тексту, ні війні. Елемент 21-го цифра, 20, римська цифра 21-го століття і посил, відсил до брегілівських е, е, зображень смерті. And here in, in that image I combined three elements. First one was text, actually no to the war. The second one was the role letters of the 21st century. And then uh, the reflections of the Bruegel images of the death. Ну, таке зіткнення 21-го століття у нас така асоціація була у всіх, як Сторіччя передових технологій, такого вистрілу в майбутнє, наукових... 21st century is associated with us, with the development of technologies, with the prominent way to the future, and with the birth of something new. Ніхто не чекав такого падіння в глибоке, страшне середньовіччя. Nobody was expecting this incredible fall into the medieval ages. І це зіткнення того, що не, не може якби, зібрати в одному зображенні те, що не збирається, воно, ну, воно робило такий конфлікт. Конфлікт і непорозуміння. This was a kind of a conflict in that image, because uh, the image should combine the element which, uh, shouldn't, which couldn't be combined. Наступним кроком, ну, коли вже почалися, ну, майже наступного дня, ну, я уявив собі оце стадо свиней, і я намалював під російським прапором просто таке оскаженіле стадо свиней, яке просто йде таким натовпом. And the second day of the war I imagined a big crowd of pigs and I uh, pictured them under the Russian flag like uh, the pigs going in the crowd. Воно було таке жорстке, але вже трохи карикатурне. Я намагався якось гротеску досягнути якогось гротеску. 
Uh, I made it quite grotesque, but still it's very tough image. І тут я зрозумів, що коли я почав думати про що потрібно тепер, куди йти, в якому напрямку. And then I started to think which direction I should choose to move forward, where to go. Я переглядав, в мене дуже багато друзів в Фейсбуку, художників, які теж реагували. І це були криваві або криваві картини, або картини зруйнованих, вже зруйнованих будинків, картини, жорсткі картини. Uh, I have many friends, uh, artists on Facebook who were reacting to the war and they were showing their pictures and usually these pictures were very bloody and uh, with uh, dead corpse or destroyed buildings. І цього було багато. And it was a lot of that. І мені спало на думку, що потрібно якось понести щось смішне. So I, I think, I, I found out that I need to bring something funny, some, some humor to that. І з одного боку я згадав, що всі казки, такі найбільш цікаві казки, це Джальсоніно, Буратіно, всі, там перемагали висміювання, перемога відбувалася через висміювання ворога. Uh, I recollected that in, mo in the most beautiful fairy tales, uh, the evil was uh, defeated by good through the, through the help of humor. З іншого боку, я згадав практики художників, які працювали з УПА в вигнанні, в еміграції в 60-х роках. From the other side, I recollected the practices of the artists who were working with the UPA warriors in the 50s and 60s. Були такі сатиричні альманахи, як Мітла, Перець, який, до речі, Радянський Союз потім перебрав собі назву Перець, Їжак, ціла серія альманахів, які як і тексти використовували сатиричні, так і малюнки сатиричні. Uh, there were a series of almanacs uh, with uh, satire content like Mitla, Yizhak, uh, Peretz, which were then took away by the Soviet Union. Ну, і я вирішив створити серію з політичної сатири в такому традиційному стилі, щоб це доходило до всіх, було зрозуміло всім. So I create I decided to create a series of political satire, political humor in a very uh, comprehensive way so that everybody could understand it. Я забрав свої амбіції концептуального художника, який працює концептуальними темами. Взяв корону з голови, поклав і почав працювати з політичною сатирою. So I took away from my head the crown of the conceptual artist. I took away my ambitions and started to work with a political humor. І тут допомогла мені моя дружина, яку я запитав, ну, як ти думаєш, який був би персонаж, ну, найбільш такий відомий і улюблений у світі, да? Тобто хто там? І вона сказала, як хто Зоро. І один з перших малюнків в цій був Зоро, який ставив на сраці російського солдата знак З, і таким чином він ну, і каже, що ну, не можна красти а чужу ідентику, да? тобто за таке авторське право. Uh, so, and my, my, my wife gave me some help uh, when I asked her what character would be the, the best well-known and the best, best, the most famous in the world. And uh, she told me Zorro. So the next series was about Zorro, which makes a sign Z on the ass of the Russian soldier and tells him that it's not good to steal. І одразу цей малюнок я виклав на Фейсбуку, одразу він отримав там 300 з чимось перепостів, лайків, теж дуже багато. І я зрозумів, що я на правильному шляху. 
Uh, I put, I shared this image on Facebook and it, it received more than 300 shares and I understood that I'm on the right way. Я почав активно працювати в цьому жанрі. So I started to work very actively in this series. І тут про мене знали, у нас був тут штаб, а осередок спочатку датського телебачення державного, які прийшли до мене, зняли репортаж, потім передали його на Євроньюз, ще і ця інформація пішла по всьому світу, і мені досі надсилаються лінки на цей репортаж. Uh, then uh, the Danish TV, who had the branch office in Vinnytsia, they find, found out that, about me and they uh, came and shoot a TV reel about me. And so even for today, I have many people share this link with me. За перший місяць мені вдалося зробити приблизно 50 малюнків. І з них я зробив експозиційний блок і виставив в краєзнавчому музеї, зробив виставку. Uh, for the first months of the war, I created approximately 50 images and I created of them an exhibition in the uh, um, regional museum. Ну, вона стала настільки популярною, що її три місяці вона висіла в Кризнавчому музеї, ну, не забирали, бо люди йшли і йшли, щоб подивитися. It became so popular that it was uh, in place for three months because people were wanting to see it again and again. Репортажі показували ну, про цю виставку ну, все більше і більше інформація йшла по світу, і мені запропонували зробити виставку ну, в Німеччині, там в різних там містах. І... В Києві відбулася виставка Русський корабль пішов туди, куди пішов. І я не міг якось, справа в тому, що ці малюнки, магазини всі були закриті, у мене не було ні паперу, нічого під руками, і я відшукував, на якісь картонках малювалося, проходив, там на помойці валяється якийсь папір, я собі відриваю, і намалював малюнок, обрізав акуратно, і так воно виходило, із того, що з підножного матеріалу, і тому... Я не міг, ну, воно висить по виставці, я не міг далі дати на якісь інші проекти. Uh, so this uh, exhibition became so popular that many TVs uh, made uh, reels about it and uh, the information spread out uh, to the whole world and I got an offer to make an exhibition in Kyiv. The exhibition in Kyiv was named uh, Russian Warship Go Fuck Yourself. Uh, now I have an offer to make an exhibition in Germany and other cities of the world. And uh, when I was creating these uh, images, I was run out of paper because all the shops were closed so I was trying to find some paper or some cartons uh, on the near the garbage bins and create on that. І тоді ми зробили таким чином, я подарував цю колекцію, ну вона цінна самою документацією, що вона створена саме в цей час, неважливо на чому, неважливо як, але ну, як сама реакція. І вони мені зробили дуже гарні е, скри, ну, як називається, скрини, сканували це все, обробили, зробили мені колекцію. І я розіслав цю колекцію на різні там і зараз є виставки, вона присутня на виставках в різних країнах. Там я навіть не знаю, де це точно, бо не відслідковував. А, а кому ти подарував колекцію, щоб було зрозуміліше? Кажу, в чому музею? Uh -huh. So I decided to uh, make a present to present this collection to the regional museum and uh, in spite of because this collection was uh, precious as a documentation, as a reaction, it was created during the time of the war and they made a very good scans for me and so now I have the collection of scans and I sent them to different organizations and now these scans are on exhibits all over the world. Ну, приблизно воно виглядало от так. So it looks like, like this, да, цю, цю я намалював, коли по Вінниці спальнули, і ми отримали страшенний вдар прямо по центру міста, ракетний. I made this paintings when we have the very uh, terrible missile strike uh, in the very center of Вінниця. Ну, це така справа, ну, як... 
необхідність да, змінити щось, але я і продовжив роботу в е, традиційних своїх напрямках і долучився до е, проекту своїх партнерів. Це е, Тотем е, з міста Херсон. Вони виїхали так, як Херсон окуповані. І ну, ми продовжили співпрацю тут. Also, I continue my traditional art practices. Uh, for example, I went into the collaboration from, with uh, Totem group from Kherson. Of course, because the Kherson is now occupied, they had to move out of Kherson. They are Olena and Maxim Afanasyev. They are Olena and Maxim Afanasyev. And curators. І дуже ми в 2021 році розпочали дуже класний проект спільно де на синтезі археології і ленд-арту. In 2021 together with them we entered into the collaborative project of the synthesis of uh, the archaeology and land art. Ми мали продовжити і в цьому році uh, на території Херсонщини, це Тягіня. Там були розкопки фортеці литовської. In 2022 we were planning to continue this project in Tjahenia, this is Kherson Regional, on the site, on the archaeological site, where they were taking the Lithuanian castle from the ground. Але тепер ця територія окупована російськими військами. But now this territory is occupied by the Russian troops. І Олена вирішила продовжити це у Литві, і я підготував невеличку групу художників від нас, і, ну, і Олена там, плюс литовські, українські художники. Вони організували продовження такого пленеру на синтезі археології і ленд-арту в місті Акміне в Литві. Олена decided to continue this project in Lithuania and I uh, prepared a group of Ukrainian artists from our side. So they now continue this plain air on, on the combination of the archaeology and the land art. І ці тематика дослідження археологічного саме в Акміне, це була, там була війна, і було велике місто, воно було знищено в давні часи, і археологи робили пошуки, щоб доказати, що тут було велике місто. І це дуже співпало з тим, що відбувається у нас, де знищуються міста. Ми бачимо Маріуполь знищений, ну, багато міст знищено, обстрілюють зараз нові міста. І цей наратив знищення міст, він якось перетнувся і відгукнувся в творах наших художників. Uh, here uh, in that place of Lithuania uh, was once a big city which was destroyed by the war. And currently what is happening in Ukraine that the cities are also destroyed. We have uh, the few cities destroyed completely. So these two narratives overlaid one onto another and uh, Ukrainian artists use that for the inspiration to create this archaeological project. Дуже гарні були результати, і, і ми вирішили зробити виставку ну, світлини цих ландартів, плюс те, що знайшли археологи, такий мікс археологічних знахідок і світлин ландарту. Ми виставили знов таки ж в Вінницькому краєзнавчому музеї. We had, a very, we had a very good results of this project and uh, they were exhibited in again in Vinica Regional Museum and these were the photos of the land art uh, object together with the archaeological findings. І багато відвідувачів, відвідувачів відчувають цей ну, схожість тематики, вона ну, як лягла на, на існуючу ситуацію дуже ну, Ну, почитується ця ситуація, яка сьогодення є в нас в Україні. Many visitors feel, feel uh, felt this, uh, this interception of the narratives and they feel like, like this, this situation in the past corresponds to the situation in the present we have today. 
Інший проект Стотем, ми ну, вони організували такий великий проект по географії. Це п'ять міст України: Вінниця, Львів, Київ. Ну, я не буду, не буду пам'ятати точно, які точно. Я займався Вінницею, частиною Вінниці, і це проект мав назву Лів життя. The other project with Totem, uh, which we made collaboratively, was called Live, like to live. And uh, this were the geographical project which combined together the five Ukrainian cities, and I was making for Vinica. This was the project about the value of life. Ми зібрали людей різних професій, різних напрямків діяльності. Uh, we gathered together people of different occupations and different professions. Роздягли їх топлес. We undressed them to go topless. І малювали бронежилети контурно таким чином вимальовували бронежилети. Ну, тут головне тіло символізувало цю беззахисність, а бронежилет ми знаємо, що це засіб захисту. And we were painting life vests on people which uh, which was highlighting the vulnerability of the human body. Ну, в проекті прийняли, а, тут важливі були ще історії цих людей, е, хто на кому були намальовані, хто айтішник, хто танцюрист співак, ну, різні-різні там професії, і культурні, і просто навіть був один водій машини, і навіть була дитинка, одна, батько з дитиною, бо і дитині теж намалювали бронежилет. Also in this project, the stories of people were also important. They were all of the different professions, like IT professionals, uh, dancers, singers, cultural workers, even driver. And even we had one man with a child uh, who also had the life vest uh, depicted on it. These светлини тепер надруковані на тонко на на тонкій матерії, такий дуже тонка, така майже прозора матерія. Зверху йде світлина, знизу текст біографії цієї людини, чому її потрібно, і аргументація, чому її потрібно захищати. So now this project looks like uh, these photos are printed on a very thin material, like very transparent material, and underneath this material is placed the text, the story of uh, this person, and like the evidence of why this life should be protected. Він складається в експозиційний такий блок, і ну, зараз Олена Афанасєва і Макс займаються тим, що готують цю експозицію для експонування на наступні документи у Каслі. Наступні, де? У Каслі документи. Україна, ага. до речі, ще не приймала участь у документі, не було представлено. Це буде, мабуть, перше представлення України на цьому заході. Uh, now Olena and Max Nafanasiev are preparing this project for the exposition in Castle Documenta and this will be the first, uh, the first time Ukraine will participate in this art show. На жаль, у мене немає тут ілюстративного матеріалу, щоб це представити, і, але ми далі намагаємося, у нас є плани працювати далі в різних напрямках. Було ще дуже багато різних заходів з акціонізма. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, any visual materials to show, but uh, I'm planning to continue my work as an artist. Місто Вінниця до нещодавно було таке безпечне, як безпечне місто. So for until until the recent missile, missile strike, the Vinnytsia city was quite safe. І воно стало таким хабом для біженців. Ну, у нас місто виросло в два рази, по людям виросло в два рази. It became a hub for refugees and the population doubled. 
Маріуполь, Харків, ну, дуже багато, Донецька область, Луганська область, всі у нас дуже багато людей, багато виїхали за кордон, але багато хто залишився у нас тут. Ну, хтось у Львів поїхав, хтось у Франківськ, але дуже багато в нас. We had people from Mariupol, Kharkiv, Donetsk, Luhansk, and many people uh, stay, stayed to live in Vinnytsia. Of course, many people moved abroad, but uh, the city population doubled. Ну і цих людей треба потрібно якось з ними працювати. Ми почали працювати, щоб зменшити оцю трагічність їх долі і ну, якось дати, ну, як арт-терапія така своєрідна теж. Uh, we started art therapy with these people to reduce the tragedy of their fate. Тут у нас був художник з Берліну Алан Мейер, і ми з ним разом робили таку акцію спільного малювання, де прийшли діти біженців, самі біженці, батьки малювали з дітьми, ми малювали з ними. Ну, такі, воно переросло потім такий ще плюс пленер, бо прийшли місцеві художники, і така акція малювальна, вона тривала цілий день. We had a painter from Berlin, Alan Mayer, and we made uh, like a common painting of adults, children and us artists. And then it turned out into the big planner because many artists joined our initiative. Результати цього проекту відправили в Берлін, ці картинки, малюнки, і там він, Алан виставляє їх, показує в публічному просторі Берліну. And we send the results to Berlin and Alan showed, shows them in the public spaces. Зараз я провожу таку програму теж для біженців. Школа сучасного мистецтва, така невеличка, саме для жінок, до речі. Uh, now I hold the program for the female refugees. This is the School of Modern Art. Організація «Відкрите суспільство» мене запросила, в них зараз в них є проект такий, і одна з складових проєктів – це як арт-терапія. Я їм кожне заняття розповідаю про якусь форму сучасного мистецтва, напрямок сучасного мистецтва. І кожне заняття ділиться на дві частини – перша лекційна, друга – практична, де вони пробують. Ну, от вчора ми робили колежі. Ну, десь післязавтра ми будемо робити абстрактний живопис. Ну, я вибираю саме такі напрямки мистецтва, які їм простіше буде керувати. Uh, the organization Open Society invited me to join the initiative of creating the uh, art therapy sessions. And every, every session I, uh, every session I uh, create with them some thing. For example, once we were creating collages, then we were creating the abstract paintings and I tell them about the different styles and different genres of the modern art. Ну, під час е, практичних занять ми багато говоримо про їх проблеми, про їх спогади, е, про ну, все, що їм болить, і це відображається і в творах, і воно через твори виходить десь, е, якось, е, вони виливають це свою, через свою творчість і таким чином оновлюють себе. Uh, usually uh, during the sessions we speak about their problems and their memories and they have a chance to put them out of themselves and to work with them. З наступного тижня я долучаю ще професійних художників до цієї групи і результатом має стати виставка, де поруч з професійними художниками будуть люди, які прийшли в цю школу. Uh, from the next week, I will invite professional artists also to join this initiative and the result will be the exhibition where the professional artists will be exhibited together with the people from the school. Це останнє, що є. Є плани на майбутнє, але про них ще рано розповідати. I also have some plans for the future, but it's too early to speak about them now. Okay, does, does anyone have any questions to Alexander?
No. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for your very comprehensive presentation and very nice explanation of the projects and uh, even uh, of, the, of the thing that we didn't have a chance to see the land arts and we didn't have a chance to have the pictures of this life west painted but I imagined it and uh, you, when you have the possibility please share them on Facebook so we can see. Thank you so much. Момент, я маю вже піти, бо я бачу на годиннику 22.32, мені потрібно, у нас комендантська година і треба добігти, я маю вдома зараз. Так, окей. Все, тоді до побачення, щасливо всім, дуже приємно було прийняти участь. Я дуже дякую тобі, що ти прийшов, дякую, рада бачити. Олександр нас зараз має йти, бо ми маємо кров'ю. And uh, he's not at home, so he needs to take this time to get home. Okay, we were happy to hear his story. And uh, let us uh, move to another artist. This is the illustration artist from Lviv, Lida Fedai. Hi, Lida. Uh, can you speak now? You are muted. Hello. Okay, while Lida is getting prepared, maybe we should invite Christina Primak. Uh, this is also the artist from Lviv. And uh, Christina, would you mind of sharing your story now for, for now for us? Yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> well. I'll try to deal with my English. Um, well, um, I'm a painter. Um, when the war started, as uh, many others, I was absolutely paralyzed. Uh, I was uh, put off and uh, put, uh, couldn't create at all. Uh, but a human brain is an amazing thing. Uh, so um, I started to come back to myself. Um, a lot of art of uh, war uh, appeared around and uh, I thought, no, uh, it's not mine. Um, social uh, topics uh, is not my thing. Uh, so um, I decided to keep uh, paint uh, flowers, birds, fishes, uh, my art is about uh, beauty, it's about nature, um, but um, I have a painting, uh, it was created uh, before uh, the war uh, began, and um, on it a bird embroidered with a cross is singing and small fishes um, came to listen to it, but now uh, I see uh, a horn there, um, through which uh, is uh, an uh, alarming siren uh, sound. And uh, small fishes around uh, are looking like small bombs. And um, uh, I suddenly realized uh, that uh, war is everywhere because it, uh, it's inside. Uh, and um, unfortunately, um, our arts, our art today is deformed um, because we are deformed. Um, but as I said, uh, human brain is an amazing thing and um, we have hope to survive and um, to evolve. Uh, maybe I'll try to show you some some my painting. Yeah, well, that would be great. Share screen, yeah? Yeah. And well, here is uh, the picture I told about. Uh, embroidered bird. Uh, it's singing, but uh, now it looks uh, absolutely like alarm. And yeah. uh, those fishes, I see bombs. And uh, I want my fishes back very much. 
And the, the next picture I want to show you, uh, it's uh, about emigration. Uh, it's about people uh, that they had to leave their homes. I'm uh, at home now. I never left uh, Lviv, but uh, I don't know, am I right or am I wrong about it? So um, I hope I can stay here because it's very important for me. And uh, I made this decision and I, with my family, stayed. Um, and these birds are leaving their homes. So I, I one more uh, painting I want to show you uh, is named "Keep Planting Flowers." Uh, it's uh, about woman. Uh, it's about me. Uh, she has a heart looking like a flower. It's equilegia, but it's. Um, Oh no, it's not a girl here. Uh, but uh, it's also called um, bleeding heart, this flower. Uh, and uh, this heart is bleeding like a heart uh, of uh, uh, Madonna. And, but uh, she keeps planting flowers because she has to. I guess that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have some questions for me? Uh, Christina, thank you so much for your presentation. And as I see, uh, your reaction to the war is a little bit different than the reaction of other artists because it's like very feminine, very gentle, very tender. And uh, oh, do you see you. any... Do you see any changes in your general overall artistic practice with the beginning of the war? Yes, I do. Um, as I said, uh, the war is inside in us. It's in our eyes. And even if uh, we uh, paint something uh, absolutely abstractive, it's about war anyway. We have no choice. That's it. Yeah, thank and you. It, Does anybody, uh, Jana has a question. Jana, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, your art is uh, so amazing. I'm very impressed uh, with Thank the you. colors, with the technique, and uh, uh, also I, uh, in my art practice, I uh, 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 I'm combining uh, painting and uh, embroidery, and uh, it's very powerful. It's very about Ukrainian people and Ukrainian traditions. It's, it's amazing. Uh, so my question is about. Uh, uh, will you have any, will you have planning any exhibition uh, with these uh, beautiful works? Uh, well, I'm not ready yet uh, to plan something, you know. Uh, I just started to work, uh, to start, I started to paint something and uh, I guess it's, uh, um, it's uh, something big for me. Uh, maybe I'm, uh, not strong enough to plan something more. Uh, that's it. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure definitely you are strong enough. And we have another question from Lacuna Festivals. I, I just want to... I hope. I wanted to share something about um, embroidery. Um, there's a project that's taking part, um, that's taking place as part of the festivals that perhaps um, yourself and Jana, you might be interested in, which is all about embroidering on um, unusual surfaces. So if you want to look that up, it's by Anna Bogashvia and it's called Conversations with Thread. There's like a special group on Facebook for it. Um, and it might be of interest just seeing your images and seeing what's happening in that group. You might be able to get something out of it. Uh, Sarah, could you please share the link uh, to that group in our chat? I can indeed, I'll do that right now. Oh, thank you so much. Thank no you. Worries. Christina, thank you so much for the beautiful presentation and uh, I was happy to see your works again and happy to see you.
And Thank let's move well. to the to the next speaker. Our panel discussion uh, seemed to be quite long because uh, the stories are not short. The stories are not simple. Uh, and uh, Lida Fadai, illustrator from Lviv, uh, are you willing to speak? Uh, unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Uh, excuse me. My internet connection is not uh, good, was not good. Uh, I uh, want to uh, tell very shortly. Uh, I will uh, share my screen now. And uh, one moment. Uh, so this is my Instagram. And but uh, since three years ago, I started to draw mostly digital because uh, it, because it was it is very easy for me to draw everywhere. And uh, on 20 February in Kharkiv, it was started to print my second books with my illustrations. And I was waiting for this for event, but uh, the invasion and war in Ukraine uh, had um, stopped all my future plans. So uh, this the first um, expression I have drawn three hours after uh, the occupation of Russia in our country. It's, and since then, during three months, uh, no, uh, since um, maybe three, um, I was drawing, yes, and illustrations and my expression of the war. And it's um, interesting that um, after after um, a little bit of time, I began to draw in different style, which were I was not drawing before. And uh, this, uh, it is for me, it was uh, like art therapy. I was drawing. Um, events that was happening in my country uh, about Zo, about uh, our heroic um, people in Mariupol, in the cruel crimes, about Bucha, about our heroes. And uh, my heart was stolen by, by this war. I was very... Um, it was very painful for me. Uh, but um, during the last months, I can draw. I'm very tired of it, of this painful mood. And I decided not to draw because I'm, I'm, try I'm tired. But in, in, same, I, in the same time, I think that uh, we must uh, fight and every person must do what what uh, it what uh, uh, we can do in our area um, now i try to come back to my drawing and to start um, share ukrainian um, culture through through the interesting ukrainian packaging design or uh, Ukrainian, uh, some uh, ornaments, and I, I am I am starting to draw again, but in more um, in more positive mood. Uh, I tr I will try. I don't know. It's my opinion. It's my emotion of these um, months months. As well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lida, for the presentation and for showing your artworks. And as far as I understood, uh, you first uh, were depicting the crimes of the war in your illustrations, but then you feel tired and exhausted from uh, painting only about the war. Am I right? Yes, yes, all my pictures, uh, all my illustration was very depressed. Yes, and I uh, was very depressed because I can express only my emotion inside of me. And it's very hard. 
yeah, this this happens also to all of us today because we are very depressed and we are deeply touched by every death, but by every crime. For example, when I was watching the movies, uh, the video reels from Bucha, I was crying for three days uh, as if I knew these people because uh, I was feeling like this crime is dead for me as well. And it's very, very painful. So this can be easily understood. And does anybody have some questions to Lida? No. I think we can <laughs> okay. start. Yeah, yeah OK. <laughs> so I will tell you also a little bit of my story. So I'm somewhere in the middle, not in the beginning of this, uh, this journey, not in the end, but somewhere here. And uh, since the beginning of the war, like uh, when I was woke up, I was woke up on 24 February by the sound of uh, the siren. And I called to my mom and said, mom, what happened? And she told me the war started. And I got so scared that I could do nothing. I could think about nothing. It, got, it took me three hours to pack a very simple backpack to take my cat and to go to the apartment of my mother and sister. So we all stayed together because we didn't know uh, what will happen then, what will happen, happen next. We didn't know that before the probable missile strikes, we will get the air siren so we can go down to the bomb shelters. We didn't know. We didn't know that the troops, the Russian troops, were away from our city. We just were sitting in the house, reading the news all the time and expecting the worst. And it was a terrible time. And for, for the first week, I almost didn't go out of the mother's house. We were only sitting, uh, smoking cigarettes and watching the news and discussing. And uh, uh, it was a terrible time. And after that, uh, my friend called me and asked me to go volunteering. So I decided to work in the kitchen for refugees and we were cooking for 12 hours a day. And it was a kind of a revelation for me that when I'm surrounded by people and when I'm doing something which is uh, for other people, also not for me, just not for my family, that I'm feeling really better. And I'm started to work for that kitchen. And after that, uh, I received an offer to join MSF, this is medicine, Sense Frontier, Doctors Without Borders, and, uh, as a translator, as a HR manager, as a coordinator. And I started that position because uh, I felt that the most urgent need for me is to help my country and to help my people and to, have, to help mostly people from the East who suffer, who don't have the necessary medication, water, food, the hygiene items. So we are working very hard to provide all these things. And now uh, this is my fourth month with MSF. And uh, I'm very happy I'm with those guys. And of course, mm, my life changed a lot because usually before the war, I was spending from early morning till the late night, I was spending in my studio, just painting and preparing my personal project, uh, which is called Trauma, which is kind of uh, quite uh, connected to what is happening today. But also I didn't quit my art practice at all because I still have some exhibition running and I'm still painting. And I have a few works connected to the war and I will I will share them with you just to show what I'm working on I will share the few paintings that which are very connected to today and this one is called the floating population. This this painting is about the refugees. I don't know what's going on with my computer. And uh, the refugees. I was thinking about the concept, about the metaphor. How can I depict the notion that the person can take at one time only only the, the things that can be hold like a small backpack that the people uh, have to live all their lives they have to close their homes leave their furniture their things their clothes their books everything they have and they what they can take with them only what they can carry and so i thought about the shell these people on the shell they move from the sea to the city. So this is from the population which have to move from the Kherson and Mariupol to the cities of Ukraine, which are not so, which are not so affected by the war. 
And the next one about the war is called the forgetting room. Maybe I will call it, I will show it in, in small pieces because here we see the war, the cardboard and the, the glass jars with different things. And uh, on above, we see the eye of God, which is uh, looking of, on what is happening in Ukraine and it is very angry. And uh, below we see like a transformative fire. And here in one jar, we see the white, red and blue snake, which bites its tail. This is Russia, which is destroying itself. And in another jar, we see the wings protecting the eggs. This is Ukraine who is growing their new, strong, very resistant, very beautiful children. And here we see the pillows. This is embroidered pillows, which Ukrainian grandmothers uh, take on beds in the villages. And this is our destroyed sleep by the air sirens. And the fish, which go, goes down the stream, uh, represents the lack of hope, because sometimes we just think that we cannot win in this war because our opponent is too strong. And here we see the raped women and killed. And here we see the blood going out of the chimney from the houses, the destroyed houses. And candles is for the peaceful citizens uh, killed by missiles. And here we see the window with the blood. This is the warriors of Ukraine military forces who were killed and who go to the another world. And another one which I want to share, this is called the lullaby. I was also thinking about the metaphor of what can explode, not like the bombs. And I thought about the, the home conservations, like of pickles, when women preserve these uh, cucumbers and tomatoes, and sometimes when they stand too long, uh, they explode. So this is a horse trying to sleep in the winter forest, and it hears explosions, and it couldn't sleep. So this is... I think, and another work is called The Neighbors Came. Here we see the very, very ordinary kitchen and uh, the woman, old woman in the Ukrainian embroidered uh, head cover, she's cooking the dinner and he, once she noticed that the neighbors come and the neighbors are of course very evil and they are going to destroy the house or they're going to kill her or they're going to do something worse, we don't know. And this is the moment when this lady is very, very scared of what can happen. And uh, this artwork is called The Silent People. Uh, this is a people who are so sad that they couldn't, that they cannot speak and what, what they can do, they can only cry because of the sorrow and the blood tears go out of their eyes and when they look into the mirror, they can see only the blood which drips to the chalice. This is about our sadness and sorrow. So this is, this was my reaction to the war and uh, how to stop sharing this fix the screen oh i see and uh, thank you so much for listening also to me and of course i will continue my art practice and uh, i will prepare in the future some project only about the war and about what i feel now but it will be after some time because now i have to combine uh, the work for me for myself as an artist and also the work for the society in msf and uh, thank you so much for listening does anyone have some questions <laughs> no okay. i have a, um, i have a quick question elena yeah. which is really just around yeah. the practicalities of things because it sounds yeah. like you're doing like a lot a lot a lot and how do you when there's so much going off around you and you're giving so much to volunteering and you're so emotionally affected by what's going on, how do you manage to sustain energy for your creative practice and keep going? Because you've been prolific. These pieces are really quite big, aren't they? Yeah, they're big. But uh, for, for me, as for me, I think that I did uh, not, not so much because I could do more if I do only art, not uh, the volunteering work. 
and uh, to sustain the energy, of course, um, and not to fall into the very, very deep depression, uh, because uh, what, what is happening, I use two very powerful tools for me. The one is everyday sport. This is uh, at least one hour exercise. And uh, this really helps me keep sane. And this is a mindfulness meditation, like the meditation of Vipassana or breezy breeze work. And I also do this every day to maintain my, my stability, my productivity, because really I have now like two jobs and uh, it's not easy, but still it's manageable. It's manageable when, and also enough time to rest and uh, enough time without the news. Sometimes I just don't read about what is happening in Ukraine because I know that I need my energy to help people, to save people's lives. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much. And uh, also, uh, we have uh, another people who didn't speak. This is uh, uh, Marina Kovalyova. Are you ready to speak now? Da, dobry večer. No, ty budeš mene prekladati, dobre? Dobre, davaj rečenja za rečenja. I will translate. Tak, zaraz. У мене презентація, тобі буде легше мене перекладати. Супер, Добре, ти супер. будеш подивитися і перекладати. Я Маркова, пейзажист, викладач мистецьких дисциплін, людина з активною громадською позицією. My name is Marina Kovalyova. I'm an artist. Uh, I make a still, still life paintings. And I'm also a lecturer of the art disciplines and a person with active civil position. Sorry for interruption, this is a technical problem. Mm -hmm. Після повномасштабного вторгнення Росії в Україну, втративши домівку та роботу, я її виїхала. Паріжка, ти можеш не читати, я можу просто зразу перекладати. Давай, давай, давай так. After the full scale, after the full scale, scale aggression of Russia into Ukraine, I lost my home and job, and I went out of the city Rubizhne of the Lugansk region, and currently I live and work in Vinnytsia. I continue to make paintings, and I'm working in a technical art college number five, and uh, I'm the master of the labor training. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that art was also our weapon uh, and also in the time of war. Then uh, with my easel, with my world, with my musical instrument, Ukrainian artists are well armed, not only to preserve, but also to spread out the Ukrainian culture, the patriotism, the love, the love to life and the love to our native land for to all over the world. Now, uh, creative people of Ukraine are holding Ukrainian art front under the Russian aggression, which dream to destroy Ukrainian culture. Personally, for me, art is not only my inspiration, but this is my way of life, my inspiration, my, my uh, big desire for our country to win this war. And uh, the desire to create and uh, uh, represent in my works the strengths and the historical courage of our people, our impossibility to destroy us and to enslave us. And I create it and I uh, represent it in the piece of Cotton Fortress. And uh, this um, painting represents the belief in the bright future and uh, which helps me and my uh, students, colleagues to 
uh, overcome the obstacles of the modern war against Russia, not to lose our spirit and to believe in the victory of our country. And uh, also the painting, the city of the future, this is how I perceive our Ukrainian cities will look like after the war. And also I want to share my uh, personal story from the not so far uh, past for the 24 February 2022. I lost my family, I lost all my belongings and I had to move out from my city. When I, was, uh, when I woke up from the bo bombs of the Russian occupants, the, my fate brought me to the very warm and wonderful city of Vinica and First, what I saw, I represented in the artwork, my feelings. Uh, these events uh, provided me the possibility to rethink my emotions and life values. And here is the painting, the view to the future. Here we see the cat, which symbolizes the home coziness and this family traditions, which looks into the universe with hope and waits until he can back home. And the work make a very big influence on, but the art practice can help to feel the event on some other levels. So I call to all the creative people who can maximally use all their forces now and leave the memory for the further generations and to represent the, the uh, represent the strengths of our country and win in their works. And here, this is the works on a material which I made for my people who went out of the occupied territory. And also the strengths of spirit of Ukrainian nation and the strengths of my own character, I represented in the artwork, the portrait of the mother, which symbolizes uh, uh, an impo impossibility to destroy the pride, the love, and to the base of love of life, which is the mother. And my last artworks uh, are uh, aimed at the at the, at the thoughts connected to the war in our country. And this is the fish koi. And uh, by this artwork, I show how I see the way to the peaceful life. In this way, the art not only helps to get, get out of the stress and the rem remnants of the war, but also provides enough strength to uh, remove the life obstacles. And the art inspires for the bright and peaceful future. And we artists uh, need to give this mood in our words works. Ну і на цьому все. So this is this is it for today. Thank you for your question. Maybe anyone has any questions? Можеш трошки розказати про своє переміщення? Як ти переїхала і де ти зараз проживаєш? Як виглядають умови твоєї роботи? Ну, я виїхала із міста Рубіжного 12 березня. On March 12, I moved out of the city Рубіжне. Я не знала, куди я їхала. Це було як спонтанно. I didn't know where I go, and it was a spontaneous decision. Спочатку я виїхала до міста Кропивницького Дніпропетровської області. And firstly, I went to the Kropivnitsky city of the Dnipropetrovsk region. А потім вже спілкуючись з друзями, які виїхали теж з міста Рубіжного, мені написали мої друзі та пригласили мене приїздити до міста Вінниця. And after that I received an invitation from my friends to join them in Vinnytsia. Після того, як я приїхала, ну, щось потрібно було робити. У шоці була, ну, як кажучи, потрібно жити було далі. 
Uh, first time I was really shocked and I needed to put myself together to think about what to do next in the life. But we still have to, to we still have to, we still have to live and move forward. Ну, і я знайшла роботу у технічному училищі. Це училище, яке після його закінчення ти можеш бути майстром, будівельником або слюсарем. І там є спеціальність художнє оформлення. І мене запросили як майстра працювати в цьому училищі. And I found a job in the technical college because after the technical college, people can be the construction workers or some labor workers, and they have uh, the position of the le lecture of the decorative arts. So I found my job. Ну, після того, як я почала працювати, я вже знала, що у мене є графік так, роботи, і я після роботи ще займаюся онлайн уроками малювання з тими дітьми, з якими я займалася у місті Рубіжному. Вони всі роз'їхались по всім куточкам світу, зараз живуть і в Росії, і на території України, і в Фінляндії є діти, які поїхали, і ми зараз у онлайн режимі з ними працюємо. Also, I give out online lectures to the children uh, that I was teaching in Rubizhne, and they now are all over the world. Some of them are left in Ukraine, some of them went to Russia, and some of them went to Finland, so they are spread all over the world. Ну, на даний момент малюю, ну, всі ці роботи, які я вам показала, це намальовані за період квітень, травень. So all the works, all the works I showed you today were created during the April, May, and June. Я виїхала із міста Рубіжного з одним чемоданом та ноутбуками і документами. Тому в мене не було ні матеріалів, нічого, не бумаги, не фарб, і мені допомогли люди. Ну і в мене були кошти, я також купила. У училищі мені дали гроші, на які я змогла купити матеріали і проводити заняття з дітьми. Також були художники, які мені допомогли купити матеріали. Uh, I, I left Rubizhne with only one backpack with my documents and uh, some essential things and I didn't have any art materials and when I come to Vinnytsia the people from the college gave me money so I can buy some art supplies to make uh, lessons for the children. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your story. And uh, this was well, very valuable to hear how you was moving out and how your life really dramatically changed with the beginning of the war. I можеш, будь ласка, зупинити екран? Сейчас. Да. Дякую. Дякую. Thank you so much. And uh, we have a question from Mark who said, what is a good way to support? Can I share your art? Mark запитує, чи він може поділитися твоєю історією, щоб, можливо, надати якусь допомогу. Так, так. Yes, Mark, you can share the story. This is fine. And uh, we have uh, the, another person to speak today. This is Alexandra Malishko. This is also an artist from Ukraine. Alexandra, are you ready to speak? Доброго вечора всім. Да, дуже дякую, що ви мене запросили на цей захід, тому що о, я знаходжусь в такому місті, де воно більш промислово і можливість е, спілкування, вона досить така ограничена е, в мистецьких кругах, тому що кожен або виїхав від селя, або зайнятий своєю роботою і... Е, Можливість спілкування не так часто вдається, як до всіх цих подій. 
thank you for inviting me today because uh, now with the beginning of the war there is not much possibility to communicate i live now with the industrial in the industrial city many people moved out and uh, so i really appreciate this possibility to speak with you today and to share my story я б хотіла б розповісти вам свою історію мистецтва за цей час я включу пізніше відеокамеру, але я її не можу зараз включити, тому що є деякі е, моменти з безпекою. Uh, I cannot turn on my camera now because of the some security reasons, but I want to share my story with you. Uh, я знаходжусь в місті Дніпро, я відсіля не виїжджала. Враховуючи досвід інших людей, своїх родичів, тому що всі опинились в такій ситуації, коли виїхавши з свого житла, вони не змогли продовжити свою творчість в тих містах, де вони опинилися. I live in the city Dnipro. I didn't leave it because many of my colleagues who left their homes found themselves in a situation that they couldn't paint no longer. Я ще хочу доповнити, що моє місто, воно межує з усіма областями, де дуже великі складності. Це Харків, Донеччина, Херсонщина, Запоріжська область, Ківарова-Градська, Миколаївська, Полтавська. Нема жодного міста на Україні, яке б не постраждало від тих подій, котрі зараз відбуваються. Uh, my city borders with the frontline cities, which are Kharkiv, Donetsk, uh, Kherson, and Zaporizhia, and there are no city in Ukraine not affected by the war. З цієї причини дуже багато біженців перебувають в нашому місті. Вони не всі однакові, різні настрої, різний стан психологічний. And we have many refugees in Ukraine who are very stressed and who have different uh, psychological and mental conditions. Дуже багато людей, котрі закриті від спілкування. Many people uh, don't want to communicate their story. Це пов'язано більше з тим, якого психологічної драми вони пережили перебуваючи в своїх рідних містах. І вони бояться працювати. And this is connected to the very big psychological drama they had to face in their city and the people are afraid. Початок війни застав, звісно, всіх зненацька. And the war was very unexpected. Моє місто час від часу підвергається ракетним обстрілам. There are missile attacks in my city from time to time. Перший час ми не могли зрозуміти, що відбувається з нами психологічно. Я не можу сказати, що це був страх. Це було щось інше. And first time we couldn't understand what happens with us psychologically. And it wasn't fear, it was something else. І тепер, повертаючись до тих відчуттів, котрі я почуваю зараз і тоді, я розумію, що тих слів підібрати неможливо. Це той стан, коли голова намагається зберегти свідомість, а тіло і фізіологія живуть своїм життям окремим. This is the time when the head tried to preserve consciousness, but the body and mind live their own lives. Тепер я хочу розповісти трошечки про себе та про свою творчість. Now I will tell a bit about myself and my creative practice. Я вільний художник. Слово вільний на цьому, на цьому саме великий акцент в цьому часі. Uh, I'm a free artist and I want to highlight the word free. Я член Національної спілки художників України. I'm the member of the National Union of Artists of Ukraine. На даний час спілка на території мого регіону, вона не веде свою діяльність. У нас немає жодної 
підтримки від спілки, кожен дійсно вільний. Currently, the Union of Artists has no activity in my region and no exhibition, nothing. So we are all really free artists. Я народилася в родині, де мистецтво це неможливо сказати точно, це нагорода чи велика кара, тому що малюють всі. I was born in a family where everybody was painting, so I don't know if it was a gift or if it was a torture. Ні в кого з нас не було легкої долі художника або творця. None of us has an easy fate of an artist or creator. Залишившись тут на Україні, більшу частину своїх картин я змогла переслати в Варшаву до сестри. And uh, I decided to remain in Ukraine and I was able to send the majority of my artworks to the Warsaw to my sister. Картини моєї сестри навпаки залишились тут у мене в моїй квартирі і їх ніде зберігати. Я не можу But їх передати їй. But still the paintings of my sister remained in my apartment and I cannot send them to her. Інколи це схоже на якийсь заброшений склад із картинами. Sometimes my apartment resembles the forgotten warehouse with paintings. І це дуже багато дискомфорту визиває у неї, тому що вона там, картини її тут, і також у мене. And this brings to a lot of discomfort for her because she wants her paintings back and for me because I have to keep them. Я дуже довго не могла розпочати свої творчі дослідження та практики під час бойових дій. And when the war started for a very long time, I couldn't start my painting practices and research practices. Було відчуття, що всі, хто не воїни, вони просто не мають можливості реалізації і вони не мають пользи в суспільстві на цей час. It was a feeling that everybody who is not directly who is not directly fighting are useless in this society and they have no place in this society. Єдина віддушена була це спілкування в соцмережах і перегляд фотографій, ті, що показували, не дивлячись ні на що, мешканці мого міста, і на цих фотографіях було начебто мирне життя. And the only thing I could do is to communicate in social media and to look at the photos which people from my city shared in spite of the fear. Ці фото надихали, і тоді я зрозуміла, що єдиний шлях боротьби за наше життя мирних граждан – це дійсно є відображення і повернення до тих цінностей, котрі у нас були під час миру. And after this, these photos inspired me, and then I understood that the only way to get back to the peaceful and normal life is to reflect the life how we love it. This is that, that very sense that they want to take away from us. And I started painting again. The first painting. Це було зображення ангела з червоним крилом, архангела Михаїла. And the first painting was an angel with a red wing, the archangel Michael. Коли я намагалась малювати пейзажі, якісь задумки реалізовувати ті, що були до війни, в мене було дуже багато планів. Before the war I had a lot of plans and uh, I wanted to start to uh, fulfill them то все одно руки малювали взриви. But still my hands were painting explosions. Я дуже довго не могла сконцентруватися, щоб не малювати щось погане. I couldn't concentrate for a very long time to paint something different, not only the war. Багато було роздумів. Uh, I had many, many thoughts. Я знайшла вихід, я знайшла ту противагу, яка мені допомогла. 
but I found the solution. I found what can help me. Я переглядала на Фейсбуці фотографії або замітки людей волонтерів, французів, англійців, котрі привозили в Україну медикаменти, збирали кошти. I was looking at the Facebook posts of the people from England, from France, who were bringing medical supplies and making volunteering activities in Ukraine. І мене це надихало і дивувало в один час. And I was I was wondering why they are doing that, and I was inspired by them. Тому що український менталітет наших людей. Ми більш розкуті, ми більш соціалізовані своїми сусідами, ми більш відкриті в нашому суспільстві для того, щоб комунікувати. І те, що для європейців не свойственно, вони ж не комунікують так з сусідами, як ми можемо піти за сіллю, за грошима, за водою, за чим завгодно. А тут люди витрачають свій час на людей іншої нації і... Я продовжую переведіть. Uh, and uh, we are were quite different from the people from the European countries because uh, we are more open, we are more sociable, we are more uh, like uh, communicating with our neighbors all the time. From time to time we go uh, visit one each other and now we see the people spend their lives, spend their time to help us. Мені здається, що іменно ці події дозволили таким людям більш розкритися більш виразити себе, тому що цього вираження їм не вистачало із-за закритого суспільства соціального в їх країнах. І ця історія з волонтерами, з доброчинством людей з інших країн надихнула мене Малювати далі, але трансформувати в щось більш добре. And this story with the volunteers from different countries inspired me to paint again, but to paint something good with the hope for the good future. Також згадалася історія про прапрадіда, котрий малював ікони для своїх земляків. Also, I, re I remember the story of my grandfather who was painting icons for his relatives. Ці дві різних тематики волонтерства і спогадів про своїх прадідів мене надихнуло писати образи. So this uh, volunteering activities and the memories about my relative inspired me to make images. І зараз я спробую включити камеру і показати, що було в моїй боротьбі. Я поставила ці картини, щоб можна було вам їх показати через камеру. І ви Now можете... I will turn on my camera and you, you will be able to see the paintings. У вас буде можливість порівняти цей мій противіз один проти іншого. So you will be able to compare the feelings I have inside. Доброго вечора всім. Good evening. Подивіться. Це я малювала рудий ліс, той що в Чорнобилі. This I was painting the red forest in Chernobyl. Всі ці картини, які я вам зараз покажу, я вже зробила з них виставку художню в Дніпрі. Also all these paintings were already exhibited in Dnipro. Це ті про які я вам розповідала, коли я малюю пейзаж, а малюються все одно взриви. So I was I was uh, telling you that I was making a landscape, but, but still it turned us out to be an explosion. Я не можу сказати, що ці пейзажі лагідні, вони більш напружені і більш, ну, якби агресивні, хоча я намагалася від цього відійти. I didn't want to make them so tense and so aggressive, but they are like they are. А сейчас я вам покажу ті образи, які були противагою. But now uh, you can see uh, the other images I made. Це моя перша картина. Час війни називається Янгол з червоним крилом. 
This is my first art, artwork, which is called The Angel with a Red Wing. І наступне це натхнення волонтерством людей з інших країн. And the other paintings are inspired by the volunteers from uh, foreign countries. Можливо, ви побачите, що вони не ідеальні. Maybe these artworks are not ideal. Я залишила їх на цьому моменті свідомо. I made it like that for consciously. На кожній з них зафіксований той стрес, який я почувала в даний конкретний момент. Every painting fixates the stress I felt in every exact moment. На деяких з них страхи відображені через очі, які не ідеальні. Some of them have, have fear in their eyes. На деяких немає майже рота намальованого і вираженого. Some of them have also almost no mouse. Це про те, що знаходячись тут, немає можливості розповідати правду про те, що ми відчуваємо, як ми живемо. This is because when we are here, we have no possibility to share the truth how we live and what we feel. Це мій особистий досвід. Дякую вам, але хотілося б ще додати, що у художників на Дніпропетровщині Порпетровщині є одна певна проблема. This is my personal experience and I'm happy that you was able to hear it and I also want to tell that the artists in the Dnipro region has one, have one problem. у нас можливість виставляти внутрі міста дуже велика. We have a vast possibility to make exhibition inside of the city. Але ми не розуміємо, як можна проявляти нашу творчість де інде. But we have no possibility to share our artwork somewhere else. Тому що всі зв'язки, які були до лютого цього року, вони всі розрушені. All the connections we had before the February 24 of this year are destroyed. Всі ті творчі плани, які робилися на декілька років вперед, можливо, це були плани стосовно досліджень, виставок, продаж, інтернет-продаж. На сьогоднішній день вони стали неможливими. All the plans we had about the exhibition, the selling of the artworks, the international festivals became impossible. І ми намагаємось дуже швидко перестроїтись, але це все справа часу. And uh, we try to rebuild to make our new lives, but this needs time. Залишившись в Дніпрі і будучи вільним художником, майже всі втратили свої здобутки. And uh, when uh, we stayed in Dnipro and we lost almost all our uh, connections. Ті люди, які не мають постійного заробітку, вони просто спустошують свої кредитні картки. The people who don't have income, they just live on what they saved in the past. Тому що самою головною цінністю для художника є придбання творчих матеріалів. Because uh, for the artist, what is most important is to have the possibility to buy art supplies. І коли стає вибір, що придбати, що переважно головніше, то завжди це художні матеріали. Of course, when we have a choice what to buy, we would also always buy art supplies. Я дякую вам за те, що ви змогли долучити нас всіх і кожен зміг розповісти свою історію, свій досвід і свій творчий шлях. Thank you so much for inviting all of us today so we all could share our stories and speak out our experience. Дякую вам. Uh, does any, anybody have any questions for Alexandra? I have a question about um, towards the beginning of that presentation. Alexandra, you said that um, people didn't want to share their stories. 
um, and you explained a little bit why, and I wondered why it was different for you, why you felt it was important to share yours. Питання в тому, що е, люд, чому ви, ви говорили на початку, що люди не дуже хочуть розказувати свої історії. І чому так? І як вам вдалося все-таки свою історію змогти розказати? Ну, справа трошечки в іншому, не в тому, що не хочуть. У людей дуже великий стрес пережити, і вони деякі закриті від спілкування, а у деяких трошки інша ситуація. Це ті люди, котрі були російськомовні, вважали себе російськомовними на інших територіях, які межують з Дніпропетровщиною. І вони були вимушені внаслідок бойових дій переїхати сюди. Вони втратили свої домівки, вони втратили, можливо, своїх близьких людей, але їх мозок, все одно залишається там десь в Росії, але вони живуть тут на Україні, ви розумієте, і вони бояться, вони лютують, але вони бояться про це розмовляти. Uh, this is because people, people don't want to share their stories because they live through a very big stress and they are close, they don't want to communicate with anybody, they have trauma. And also many people don't want to share their stories because they were Russian speaking, they were living on the territory of Ukraine, but now these uh, cities are occupied and these people moved to another people, to another places of Ukraine, but uh, they are still uh, Russian speaking. І це більшість люди, котрі були інфіковані пропагандою росіян, як ми колись при Радянському Союзі. Ми вважали, що єдиний героїчний народ – це той, що живе на території Радянського Союзу. Всі інші – вони в боротьбі. І вони завжди вороги. Ви розумієте про що? Про це думають тепер і вони. Now these people, uh, these people were infected by the Russian propaganda, like all of us in the Soviet Union time, and that's, they think that the real warriors are only in Russia and all the other nations are enemies. Do you have any more questions? Uh, if no, I would like to... First of all, make a kind of the conclusion of what we have today, what we were speaking today. And uh, as we see the world dramatically changed all our lives, uh, they changed our art practices, they changed the topics we paint about, the topics we make our art about. They changed the whole our artistic routine. Uh, some of us have not only the artwork but also we participate in different volunteering activities we collect money for the military forces of ukraine everybody wants to help and art has become for me personally art is now a luxury when uh, before the war art was the usual thing i think i do every day this was my everyday routine now for me is a luxury that i have to give all my spare time for that i have to give my weekends for and i think that's not only for me that for all of you the same and we can only hope that this R will become an, become an arrow that it will become a weapon it will become a gun a bullet which will help us defeat the enemy and uh, release the world from this black spot Thank you so much for everybody for joining me. Thank you, Sara, for inviting us for the Lacuna Festival. So one great event. And uh, uh, since this discussion was so long, but personally, I really enjoy uh, hearing all it, all the precious stories, all that lives. They are really so alive and uh, full with pain and tears and something very, very real and very, very human. Thank you so much, Elena. Firstly, for organizing this, I think that it's been the most important event that we have hosted this year, without a doubt. Um, and I'd also like to thank all of the artists who've taken part and shared your stories so candidly and so generously. Um, nobody apart from you can 
even imagine what you are experiencing and so to share so generously is really is really appreciated um and seeing all of your artwork um has been amazing um please do get in touch with us and stay in touch with us um we have festivals every year and if you would like to exhibit internationally um we would love to have you so